Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to another Fellowship Friday. Woo! In a way, it's kind of a miracle because uh, based on last week, uh, I, I had decided that we couldn't continue the program. And then we decided that we needed to figure out some way that we so that we could continue the program. And then tonight, I, we had some little technical things that I had to resolve. So we're a few minutes behind, but we got that figured out. Now we're up and running, so welcome. And uh, the Fellowship Friday program is uh, different than the Wednesday Bible study and the Sunday church uh, program for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Um, it's fellowship. So rather than have an H, a book of the Bible to study or a or a church program, uh, this is for fellowship. And so what I'm going to try to do uh, tonight and on the future Fridays is focus on three things. And that is um, the um, our thoughts, the, the, the not just the people here in this panel, but everybody in the chat room. We want to share our thoughts, whatever's on our mind. Also, we want to everybody to share their problems. If you have a problem you need addressed and you maybe think some counseling or some, some help or prayers are, are, are needed, then uh, let us know. Uh, and then, of course, let's not forget out, let's also share our blessings and, 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 and use this time to praise Jesus for all the good things and not, not just take all these good things for, for granted. Um, so uh, we're going to share our thoughts, share our problems, and share our blessings. It's kind of the, the theme as I see it now. Who knows, next Friday maybe we'll change to a different different focus. We'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, let me ask everybody here on the panel here to take a minute to say hi to everybody. And uh, just take a minute just to introduce yourself. Maybe somebody here uh, doesn't know about your channel. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go from left to right here, starting with uh, Bible literalist Sister Paula. Hello again. Uh, yeah, Bible literalist channel. Um, had a nice talk with Renee the other day. And, of course, the interview that you you did, Luke, with me before that. Um, and just went over a 1,000 subs a few days ago largely because of those things that uh, people from this realm came over there and, and subbed. So doing all right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that to today is that by um, uh, those of us who are working closely together, um, uh, our, our audiences are seeing uh, each other and kind of merging. And it's a great way to, for each of our channels to grow because of, because of uh, this collaboration that we're doing. So I'm glad that you've already seen some benefit from that, uh, Paula. Uh, okay, the next one I see here is uh, God, Jesus. That's Brother Dave. Hi. Hey, what's going on, Brother Luke? Yeah. Well, um, Dave, uh, tell the, the viewers, uh, just to, um, take just one minute and tell them about your channel. So I hope you'll subscribe to everybody here in the panel. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Brother Dave, uh, the channel name is Brother Dave. Put videos up uh, as I can. Try to encourage the body, the brethren. Uh, try to give some uh, exhortation, some understanding of certain scriptures. Going to start doing some new stuff uh, coming real soon with a, a weekly encouragement and a weekly Bible study as well. Um, other than that, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me and uh, God bless everybody in the chat. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, I, I've got a question for you I'll bring up after we're finished with the introductions regarding uh, the, uh, the message I sent you earlier today. Uh, okay, uh, next, got Brother Cripps. Hey, guys, Jason Cripps here. Um, I'm part of the channel called True Story Live, which comes on Sunday night at 9 p.m. I'm also on Sin City Preacher on the Wednesday Night Bible Study and uh, Talking Doctrine Monday nights for Monday's Milk. And I like doing uh, shows like this. Uh, this isn't my first one, but um, now that we have uh, things kind of dialed in a little bit different way, to, uh, I want to uh, see how it went tonight and be a part of it. So hello to everyone in the chat. Love you guys. And um, uh, Paula, uh, I've, I've 
heard your interview and I've heard you on a couple of shows. I don't think we've been on a panel together yet, but it's a pleasure to, to be here. And I don't know Lisa as much. I think I've heard her on here, but hello to you as well, Lisa. I'm, uh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, awesome. awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Cripps. Um, uh, next, we have Sister Lisa. And, and uh, for the Most High Jesus, uh, go ahead and tell them about your channel, Sister. Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Lisa. For the Most High Jesus. Um, I started my channel, I don't even recall it, I think it's more than 10 years ago um, because I saw all of these uh, like expose type videos and people attacking one another in the faith and I really didn't like it. Uh, I thought it was quite ugly and stuff because they weren't just attacking doctrine, they were actually getting into ad hominem attacks against one another. And I saw the false doctrine of Lordship Damnation and how much it was hurting people and, you know, how many people were literally being shipwrecked by that doctrine. And so I started uh, posting videos of my own refuting the lies uh, associated with that doctrine to simply bring comfort uh, to my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, actually, uh, this might surprise everybody, but uh, everybody here, uh, including Math Matthias, Talking Doctrine, uh, I have known Sister Lisa longer than anybody. Uh, I, th I think we probably go back about six years ago when I first started doing these hangouts. Uh, the very first two or three hangouts I did, uh, uh, Sister Lisa was part of it, and we go back a long ways, and uh, I've always uh, loved uh, her channel and what she does there. So if you don't know about For the Most High Jesus, you should subscribe. And let me say something right now about uh, Lisa, uh, Paula, and Renee. Uh, I, I've been behind the scenes trying to encourage them to, to work together and collaborate because uh, I'm so impressed with each, each of them. They're just really uh, very powerful sisters and we need to have uh, sisters bring them to the forefront those people who really have a lot to offer to the congregation so I think we're going to see a lot of good collaboration uh, from them I'm, I'm hopeful, hopeful for that uh, but I was I was I told Renee that uh, there's the, the 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 professor the evangelist and the preacher and she says, well, who's who? I said, well, Paul is the professor, Renee's the evangelist, and uh, Lisa is the preacher. And as you get to know them, you know, everybody knows Renee, but as you get to know Paula and Lisa, you'll see why I kind of identify them in that way. All right? So if you think I'm applying the wrong label to you, let me know and correct me, okay? And we got Matthias here with us, too. Uh, I don't, Matthias, are you, are you going to be engaging with us tonight or are you just going to stay behind the scenes? Mostly behind the scenes, but I, I'm here if you guys have any questions for me, though. Yes. Okay. All right, good. Uh, okay, so let's get started with our, our uh, discussion. Or really, um, if if I get sidetracked, oh, by the way, okay, what, what am I doing here? This is my channel. I'm hosting this, but uh, but... The, the way I see my role here in these pro programs on Fridays is um, uh, I, I just want to uh, be uh, someone who, uh, what is the right word? Not moderator, but uh, uh, facilitator. I want to try to facilitate and, and make sure that I try to get everybody engaged in everybody's thoughts. And uh, it's, it, it's easy since everybody here is so full of knowledge uh, any one person could talk for an hour straight on any given question we have. Uh, so, uh, we, but I think we're all uh, uh, understand about have a group conversation. And so we'll try to get everybody have equal participation as much as possible. That can't really do it perfectly equally, but that's what I'm going to try to do as a, as a facilitator for the conversation. But uh, I'm going to try to steer the conversation toward these, this fellowship concept 
and uh, fellowship takes place among believers. Uh, so everybody in the chat room, if you are a believer, uh, then we can we we will have fellowship tonight. Uh, uh, if you're not a believer, uh, you're welcome to listen. Um, we're happy you're here, and uh, we're hopeful that you too will come to this saving knowledge and faith that, that we have with uh, our, our Christianity, as I call it. Um, but uh, I don't know. If, I, I'm all I'm open to ideas from the panelists as far as the, the direction to go. But let me open it up by saying uh, I'd like to know each of your thoughts. What's on your mind? And, and the people in the chat room too. If you have something on your mind that you want us to to discuss, uh, something that you maybe need some help with, uh, just put it in all caps so that we can identify it and uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, address your whatever it is. So uh, anybody on the panel, whoever feels like there's something on your mind right now that you wanna to bring to everybody's attention, let's start with that. Uh, I'm not gonna call on anybody, just whoever has a, a mind, that, something on their mind that they would like to bring to the, the discussion. I nominate Brother Dave to uh, share his thoughts. Oh, yeah, oh. I should, if, I'm glad you said that because I did have something I wanted to ask Brother Dave about. Look at oh, that. Geez. Why do you guys, why do I have to start it off? I don't know. We could talk about anything tonight. I think we should bounce <laughs> some ideas around, but I think we should try to maybe help uh, the chat tonight if they have uh, any particular questions. We can bounce around our, our ideas on them. If you guys want to talk about certain things that are uh, going on in the body of Christ that we need to keep our eyes peeled for, anything going on in you know anything that's going on in our world anything you guys want to talk about i'm open for for everything okay let me bring up a subject then because uh i got an email this morning and, and then immediately i thought of brother dave and i contacted him and kind of gave him a referral and uh, uh do you remember a few sundays ago someone was appealing to us uh, for some kind of discipleship program and they said, uh, as a new believer, can somebody disciple me, kind of take me under their wing and help me to learn and grow? And um, um, so we thought that's a good idea. So we said, if you if you have that kind of need, let me know and we'll find someone. And uh, so I got someone saying, hey, could you, I, I'm, I've, I've recently come to the belief in eternal security and faith alone. And uh, it, could you have one of the, uh, I forgot how it was phrased, I don't know if it was brothers or believers or elders or whatever, could you have someone contact me to, to, to kind of help me in that way? So I, I uh, told Brother Dave about it and they gave, him, gave us the phone number. So I gave Dave the phone number. Dave, can you get, bring us up to speed what's happening there? Well, as of right now, I'm going to have to try to contact him again tomorrow. I tried to reach out. There was no answer. Um, so I'll have to reach out again tomorrow. But I did get your email, and uh, I definitely can uh, get with him and, you know, get his location, get his information, get him connected to a, uh, a local fellowship that, that teaches sound doctrine and uh, also can, uh, you know, uh, share some stuff with him myself. And, and so... Uh, Maybe we'll uh, bring him in and, and get him acclimated with uh, all the shows uh, in Coats and uh, have him meet everybody as well and just be able to kind of hang out with us. Uh, Fellowship Online, I'll uh, I'll work I'll work with him behind the scenes the best I can, and I'll also uh, search his uh, local area and get him plugged into a uh, a gospel preaching uh, local fellowship. Just so you know, brother David, CES now. What's that? Instead of coats, it's just CES. Keep it simple. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We recently, uh, uh, Matthias started using CES. I like the idea, and I've encouraged everybody to drop the coats because uh, that is something that some people uh, keep on uh, uh, flying that coats banner in a negative way, trying to. Uh, um, always represent us in a bad light as coats and uh, i think ces is better uh, you know there's another group called ges grace evangelical society that i recommend uh founded by zane hodges and now bob wilkins is uh, uh leads it uh, but now we're ces ces or church of the eternally secure um 
Okay, now let me get the feedback from uh, the panel here re regarding what happened today. S someone said, I, per I don't know if they heard the sermon or the thing on Sunday that we were, when we were talking about this, but we said, okay, if you're a new believer and you want to be discipled by someone who's uh, uh, more, let's say, uh, older in the faith, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll see if we can find someone who can touch base with you and, and link up with you so that you can, uh, uh, you know, you can help someone to grow. And uh, Matthias has done that quite a bit. And I thought of Matthias, but I thought um, he, Matthias has a lot on his plate already. And uh, um, I, maybe Brother Dave has the time. And, uh, and so I'm, I was happy that he, he was very eager to call the person and, and help them out. Uh, so panelists, uh, you know, give me give me your thoughts on, on that as a, as a concept, if you think that... Uh, I'll, I'll go. I think it's a great right. idea. And I think we should we should be doing that anyway. I think part of the problem with the, in the brick and mortar church is that there's not a whole lot of that happening. Um, I remember uh, growing up in a Baptist church, they had discipleship classes that you took as part of being a member of the church, and those were somewhat valuable but um, for a new believer discipleship is absolutely necessary and I think that's why uh, a lot of new believers struggle for so long they don't have discipleship um, a lot of times it just happens naturally that you just you kind of come alongside uh, someone who's a new believer and just offer um, advice or just to listen it doesn't have to be a big deal and uh, it happens more naturally but I think offering it like you did is a good idea and um, I believe that if a person steps forward and says, yeah, I would like some discipleship, you'll be able to find someone to do it. Yeah. Spend the time. And I, I kind of volunteered Brother Dave for it, uh, but he was happy and uh, willing. Uh, I, I would like to ask everybody else in the congregation, if you are an elder. Now, when I started referring to the, some of the panelists as elders, uh, like a year, almost two years ago, I got a reaction from Daniel. Um, he, he, he says, "I wish you wouldn't call us elders." I mean, because the uh, the Mormons give that title to these guys that are like eighteen and twenty years old, and they're called elders. And uh, I stopped referring to the panelists as elders, uh, even though I, I do think it's it's appropriate. And to me, elder just means that you've been a, a Christian for a longer time and you have matured to a certain extent and you, you've studied. So you've, you've, you've got a lot of study under your belt, you've got some spiritual maturity, and you've got years of experience. And I, I think that qualifies someone as an elder. But uh, let me get your thoughts on that. Anybody who wants to, if, if I'm using the word incorrectly, and also if anybody here or in the chat room, if you are an elder, uh, if you want to volunteer for that kind of a program so that, hey, if this happens again, uh, I have someone else to refer refer this person to that want, needs to be discipled. Anyone? Um, we have a Discord server that we call Salt and Light that we made for that purpose, for discipleship, because there are a lot of people who don't have any uh, either a no, no church family or no contacts at all to help them out to get started or, you know, and so we, we also have a website that people can do, go to that we made as kind of a, if, if nothing else, a self-guided discipleship. Um, I can post that in the chat if you want. Um, and if they wanted to uh, go through discipleship, we can there's a contact at the website that uh, will take them get them an invite to their to our discord server and we can uh, we have a group of people there that um, are all experienced Christians that can help them out so we do have I think we're all on the same page uh, that's how yeah. it works as far as that's a, a big need I, yeah. I agree all right so um, if, if someone contacts me again uh, saying I need some help could some uh, elder some experienced Christian contact me uh, then uh, you you can contact uh, sister Paula uh, her her uh, YouTube channel is uh, Bible literalist by the way everybody in the chat room 
uh, what you ought to do is make a comment, or not the chat room, but everybody on the panel, if you haven't already, you should make a comment in the chat room because that way people can find your the link to your channel that way. Uh, so if they want to know how to get to your channel, they need to just click on your comment and they'll be able to go directly to your channel. So each per, each person on the panel, please take a minute and and, uh, and make a little comment there if you haven't already. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if any, anybody else has a need, you can go directly to uh, Sister Paula's channel or contact me and I'll either refer, refer you to them or, or someone else we know and trust. Uh, all right. Um, anybody else have any thoughts or any ideas on this idea of discipling? All right. Well, let me tell you uh, a problem. I, I said we want to talk about our thoughts and our problems and our blessings. So uh, I've got a problem. <laughs> I, I'm not feeling well today. And... Uh, you know, I've been I've changed my diet around the last couple of years, and last night I did ate something I I, I no longer eat, and I think I reacted, and I was I, and then I wasn't able to sleep, and uh, just I just felt miserable all day. Uh, so, uh, but also the, my my main main problem is that two days ago my wife left uh, to go to Connecticut, where she was born and raised, and she'll be gone for a month. Uh, some people say, what, your wife leaves for a month? That's what I say. I say, you're going to go for a month? But she tells me, she says, you get to be 12 months in your hometown with your family and friends. I, I only get one month to be with mine. So for, we have our 40th anniversary coming up next month. And she's been going back east to, to visit her family each year, at least once or twice a year for at least two weeks or four weeks. So I'm used to it. But immediately... When I dropped her off at the airport and it, I get home and I realize I'm all alone, I felt really, really lonely and it really, really hit me. And then I thought of my brother, Don. Uh, he might be in the chat room under Arlo, uh, Arlo Walker, but he's probably my oldest friend that's still alive. I've known him since high school. And uh, he he was married for 47 years and just lost his wife a few weeks ago, a couple months ago actually. And he so I, I in a way I'm identifying with with you know being alone. Fortunately, he has some family still living with him, but to be alone is uh, the thought of it is is pretty bad. So the, let me uh, just ask everybody, you know, pray for me so that I can. Uh, uh, I I got up out of my chair to, to go to uh, the, where my wife normally is in, in that the room and and I got to go there to tell her something and realize wait she's not there it just this that didn't even dawn on me she's not there I was just so used to getting up and excited and wanting to go tell her something so uh, it's going to be t tough this month for me in that respect so that's what's on my mind what's on your mind anybody. <clears throat> So have you always been, uh, okay, this is this is maybe not a fellowship question necessarily, but are, have you always been a person that wants to be around other people more than you want to be alone? Uh, well, uh, I don't mind being alone, Brian, right. but uh, it's, it's, it's all a matter of proportion, you know? Yeah. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we, we occupy different parts of the house throughout the much of the day so that we do have our alone but at least i know she's in the building and i'll tell you what um, some of the health issues i've gone through the last few years and i spent a lot of time in hospitals i've had a lot of surgeries and um uh if if i didn't have a wife uh, to to help me get through it i mean i don't know if i would have gotten through it but it was uh I'm thankful that, that uh, you know, I, I really feel for the people who grow old and, and get sickly in yeah. and, and their last years. They're, they're going through problems, health problems, and they're alone. Yeah. So, yeah. I, especially in the aging, I would rather be with someone that I love and care about than be alone. I just think it's an interesting question. Um, yeah. 
but in terms of fellowship, if you're if you're alone, but you have people that you can talk to, like doing these shows, at least you're you're not isolating. You're connecting to other people, even if you're yeah. not in town. Yeah, and I've and I've spent some time on the phone with some people the last couple of days, and so yeah. you know I you know I'm able to uh, reach out and, and uh, have have conversations. Um, but it's yeah. not, it's not the same as having someone actually there. But yeah. Something I appreciate about you, Brother Luke, you will reach out to someone if you have a question or sometimes just, you know, to check on someone or um, pass notes along or whatever. And um, I'm someone that appreciates that. I, you know, I don't <laughs> want to be on the phone all the time, but um, someone that reach, reaches out is, uh, I respond to that. I always answer the phone when you call, you know. Yeah, you do. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate it. I, I think there may be some people that don't appreciate it that <laughs> that probably saying, "Hey, you know, why does he have to call me that much?" You know, I no. I don't call everybody a lot, but it is nice to to know that uh, when you do call someone, that they they are you know interested in talking to you. Yeah, that's fellowship. Yeah, I, here's a question for you: Is it is it really um, uh, how much? Um, I don't want to call it forgiveness. Come up, someone can come up with another word for me. Grace. But let's say, let's say that take this example of calling someone and staying in touch with someone. Mm -hmm. And and let's say I'm always making an effort. Yeah. And you real and I realize, let's say after five times, ten times, twenty times, weeks, months, years, the person has never ever reached out to me. And I, I realized that, wait a second, I'm, they've never called me, they never make an effort. I wonder if I never called them or never talked to them, if they would even care. Yeah. And is this just a one-way relationship? Yeah. Does anybody That's... have any experience with that? And am I being uh, overreacting or should I just be completely... Uh, I think it depends. I, I think it's a great question. I think it depends. I have friends that sometimes I don't talk to them for three, four years at a time, but when I talk to them, it's like no time ever passed. You know, it's it's like we've been talking the whole time, but these are people I've known my whole life. You know, we might not talk every day, we might not talk every year. Um, yeah, I've got a handful of people that are like that that I grew up with, and I I just will, they'll call me every once in a while, the blue, and check in, and we'll catch up for an hour or so, and then I don't talk to them again. But generally, I'm answering your question. Generally, if you're reaching out to someone else and that they never seem to ever reach out to you, then they just may not be interested in that. And it's up to you how much effort you want to put in, uh, how much uh, grace you want to lend them in that area of reaching back out to you. You know, I, I told everybody that uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we had a 50 year reunion for my college fraternity, Sigma Chi. I actually, I thought uh, that our uh, brother, Jason Jack, is also a Sigma Chi. A lot of people go to college and don't join these social fraternities, but I did and I had a lot of fun and I, I've had some friendships that are 50 years old because of it. Um, but uh, the, um, uh, there, there's, there's a creed and, and there, there's, there's a, a principles that you learn in the fraternity uh, to try to be virtuous. Uh, and and one of the lines in the creed that has always stood out to me, and I, I've always held it in the back of my mind, it says, the bond of our fellowship is reciprocal. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, that's what we that's what we we promise in the fraternity that we have a reciprocal relationship. It's not going to be one way. Um, but uh, uh, I think that's important. I do. Notice that I do have some friends that I still love, and but it seemed like I don't think they'd ever call me if I didn't if I stopped calling them. Yeah, it's not yeah. reciprocal. I think that's definitely important in a and if you want a close relationship, I think it has to be reciprocal. It has to be reciprocal, and it has to be symbiotic. It's you you give to each other. It's not it's not just a give and take uh, scenario. If it is, then it becomes more one sided or selfish, and that can lead to uh, yeah. Frustration. Sure. I see. Uh, Sister Lisa has her microphone off. Uh, maybe the, I asked everybody to turn your microphone off if you're eager to say something. Re Lisa, do you have you want to respond to anything we've been talking about? Oh, actually, I was doing it backwards. I guess <laughs> I had it off, so I wouldn't have any uh, interruptions for you. 
But um, thinking about what you were saying in my personal experience, uh, usually I, I go by how I'm received depending on how long the time has been. If the person is kind of throwing out vibes that they don't really want to, you know, keep in touch kind of thing or, that, you know, just you're getting some kind of negativity or you feel that they're trying to pull away kind of thing is, you know, it's just kind of subjective. As the other brother was saying, there are people in your life you don't talk to for years. You see them, it's like you never stop talking. And then others, I don't know if it's something with them or something that they have against you or whatever. They feel like they want to you get the feeling they want to kind of run away as soon as they can. So I don't, I don't know. I just be me. And uh, if you're the kind of person who likes reaching out to people and calling people, Hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. I agree with that. Lisa, thank you for, for that. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd like to get uh, other people's thoughts on, uh, I'm sensitive to these things. Uh, I, I start thinking, dude, am I the only one that cares if I, if I don't get a call from someone? And why is it always my responsibility, my duty to, to always call them, uh, I, whether it's family or friends? Um, it, uh, maybe I'm being uh, self-centered and thinking too much, but does anybody else have that thought in the back of their mind in these cases? Yeah, I, uh, I'll say more. I used to, uh, I used to be like that. And then I went through a long period of time where I didn't want any, any fellowship. I just, uh, I chose to isolate, um, to avoid, uh, being hurt, you know, uh, and I've shared that before. Uh, when I broke free from that, I'm the one that made the effort. I'm the one that, uh, decided to be open and decided to reach out to other people. Um, and I found uh, a handful of people that were willing to reach out back, uh, you know, to, to hit me back up if I give them a call. Um, and then it's just natural at that point. That you, I don't have to work toward that. I don't have to worry if I don't hear from them one week because uh, I know if I don't hear from them one week, they're going to call me the next week. Um, I have that kind of relationship I feel with Matthias. Matthias will call me one week, maybe a couple times. Next week, I don't hear from him. But it doesn't freak me out, you know. I mean, um, I think working on the shows is a little bit different than uh, having a relationship outside of the broadcasts. So there's a few people that I have that with. And it, I, I don't think I get offended if I don't talk to everyone. Uh, but, you know, if it's a long period of time and I've reached out to someone several times, yeah, I think that there's a part of you that it, it would make sense that that would bother you a little bit, honestly. Yeah. 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 And they often have to kind of be prayerful too, because it may not be how they feel toward you. It could be something they're feeling about themselves that may be even magnified when they're around you. You know, some negative emotion. Like if that mm -hmm. person is feeling in some way less spiritual less holy i don't know the devil plays with people's minds sometimes coming around other believers can make people want to shy away mm -hmm. yeah well i'm i'm seeing that some people uh, agree with me that uh, you know if you if it's always you that has to make the effort then eventually you reach the point you you can't help but wonder if how much the other person values the friendship or the relationship. Uh, but I guess I guess we should just keep on calling, keep on uh, keep on trying, and not give up. I know Paulo, she turned you turned off your microphone. You were going to say something about this. Yeah, I think there's also personality issues because uh, my personality, for example, I'm the type that needs more alone time and more personal space. But I do, you know, I'm, I'm all for saying hi to people when I run into them. But a lot of times I'm not, I don't like to bother people or something, but um, certain personalities like, like mine, we find too much social interaction tiring and exhausting and we have to recharge. Whereas 
the opposite type, like the, the outgoing type, finds gets their energy from social interactions. And so, you know, the, they if you're two people are at opposite ends of that, they're they're going to wonder what's wrong with the other person all the time. So I think sometimes we just need to uh, try to find out through trial and error, I guess, what kind of personality the other person is and whether um, we should let them make the contact or not, because some people are just very private, you know? Yeah. Well, Kimberly wrote, uh, try not calling for a while and see. And I, I, I do, I have done that. Um, and I, I actually think about doing that quite often with people. And, and, but I am afraid. I'm afraid that I might be hurt because I'm maybe how real find out that wait they never they never recognize it. Hey, I haven't talked to him for a long time. He hasn't. He always calls me. What's going on? And then they call me. But maybe they're going to tell or not even think. Maybe they just don't ever think think about me, and, and so they don't want to call. Or or maybe they're relieved. Say, why? Well, God, he's not calling me anymore. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, but I'm I mean, glad that uh, at least some people are have uh, think about these things. I'm not uh, some kind of a mental problem where I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm overthinking these things. No, yeah. I, I don't think so. I think for me, uh, I want to have relationships with people that want to have them with me. I don't, I, I don't force it anymore. I don't try to push it. If there's if there's someone that that uh, likes me and wants to get to know me better, I'm pretty open about that, and I I'm reciprocal in that way. If they don't, then they don't. I, I get over it pretty quick because for every person that doesn't want to reach out uh, back to you, uh, but work, I think this is true, that there are other people that do want that and that would appreciate that. It's just a matter of finding them. Yeah. Well, maybe Matthias can help uh, Lisa. She, Lisa wrote in the chat, can someone tell me why there is a slight echo or delay in my headset when speaking? It is thoroughly irritating. Matthias, do you have any ideas on why... Lisa's getting an echo. Yeah. Matthias, how does it feel to be only called upon if there's some technical issue? <laughs> well, See? wait a minute. Now, on TSL, he, he does both now. So he's got to do the technical issues. We don't have uh, many glitches over there, fortunately, but uh, he's called upon. Uh, at least for the two hours that we're doing yeah. the show, he has to comment. So. Okay, uh, I've got uh, Jay. Let me see who is it. Jay Kink. Uh, I think it was Jay Kink. I'm, I'm looking for it. It said, uh, 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 "Give me your email, and I'll give you my phone number, and, and I'll and I'll call you." Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, Jay Jay Sank. 2075. Um, anybody who does want to talk to me, uh, if you will email me at sincitypreacher at gmail.com and give me your phone number, I will call you and we can talk. Uh, now, uh, someone else just put up, hey, put your number up, Luke, and you will be getting huge numbers of calling you, <laughs> lol. Uh, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> bit afraid of that uh, because we do have enemies. Um, there is the enemy, there are the minions, and then we also have uh, these professors that, that uh, they're professing faith in Jesus, and all the while they're trying to stir up trouble in our uh, congregation, and they'd yeah. love to have my phone number just to do try to uh, create a problem for me. Yeah. So I'm a little afraid of doing that. Um, they're everywhere. The flying monkeys, the uh, instigators, the mud rakers. Remember that term, uh, Brother Luke, mud raker? Uh, muck raker. Muck raker, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Muck, raker. muck raker. I don't know what it means. I mean, I mean, I know what it means, but I don't know the origin of muck raking. I like looking up the origin of words, though. I do as well. Are. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, I like it's that. very too. revealing. Matter of fact, I think that uh, Paula, uh, I, uh, I think that is actually part of your methodology is a look at the origins and the actual meanings of these words and applying it correctly instead of not always trusting that the translators got it right yeah i really enjoy uh paula's um uh, what what she does and uh i definitely stand with you uh paula by the way too uh 
um, I hope that's some consolation, at least. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're in in terms of um, all the work that you've done on studying what uh, Paul meant by uh, the verses talking about women being in ministry and things like that. This, I, I haven't looked at everything. I haven't read your book yet, but I, I've heard you talk about enough to yeah. uh, have well, it. Let me, let me ask Thank Paula. Uh, I've made a couple of comments um, on your uh, recent uh, teaching with Renee, and, and, and I've, I've used this word prosopopoeia, and I have a playlist titled, um, Was Paul a Diatribalist? Prosopopoeia. And it's a playlist and a couple of videos I've made on, on that subject. And I, I believe that Paul did use this oratorical technique. And I'm wondering, I'd be surprised if you're not familiar with it, but uh, Sister Paula, are, are, do, you, um, do you know what prosopopoeia is? And do you think that Paul applied that, that method? I think he did that and a lot of other things too. He does a lot of plays on words. He does some sarcasm. Um, I, I think that he's got a, a, a rich, not just a vocabulary, but a expressive range. And that's why he gets misunderstood. As Peter said, I think in second Peter that people, uh, twist Paul's words, like they do the other scriptures because Paul is a very complex communicator. And you, you do, when you, you know, translating the new Testament, you get to know the writers. And for example, the Apostle John, I would just describe as out there. He's just otherworldly, very roundabout way of saying things. Whereas Paul will get right to the point, but he'll get to there through rhetorical devices, such as chiastic arguments, which is, you know, I, I, I've mentioned that before. Like most people don't know the whole book of Romans is one giant argument with a center point, And he'll you know, and that's why sometimes you see the same topic come back a couple chapters later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he does he does all sorts of things. He's a very complicated person. Yeah, uh, I, I maybe you're you, you're busy uh, working on whatever projects uh, on the table right now. But I'd love to have you look at the videos I did on that subject and, and give me your feedback on that. Yeah. Um, uh, we haven't heard from Brother Dave, uh, and that's uh, shocking to me. Uh, so, Brother Dave, are you speechless? <laughs> I'm just kicking back listening, Brother Luke. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing, being a good listener. I am not worried about Brother Dave being speechless. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not a problem I think he has. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, not, you know, I get a call every now and then, and it's good. It's good. I, I try to reach out to people as well, but... Majority of the time, the only people that call me are robocalls and bill collectors. Okay. Wow. Okay. Your number. I'll call you. I'll call you, Brother Dave, and I'll do different voices to try to make you guess. <laughs> well, Sister Renee, uh, she uh, she reach out to me. Uh, Brother Luke reach. I mean, people reach out to me. I'm not saying nobody calls me. I'm just saying sometimes I'm really on the go, and I'm I'm either going here, going there. I'm on the phone doing this, or I'm doing that, or you know. And it, it, sometimes it's cool when the phone doesn't ring. Right. And then sometimes when everything's at a standstill, sometimes you kind of wish the phone would ring, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see that for sure. Yeah. It just seems for me a lot of the times it's, it's, you know, when the phone needs to ring, it doesn't ring. And when it doesn't need to ring, it rings. Yeah, that's true. It's the way it's been running for me anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about, I mean, I, I was able to vent a little bit telling you what's on my mind and the, the, the problem of uh, being alone here for a month. Uh, uh, anybody else here have any any problem that you want to share? Maybe we don't, we don't have to keep our problems personal. We don't have to carry the burden, you know, all, all alone. If you do have a problem uh, and you want to talk about it, maybe get counsel, uh, well, let me know. I, I should say we've had prayers for my husband with his kidney stone pain, and he's pain free at the moment. Um, we had mm -hmm. called, you know, he had post op pain from the kidney operation, and uh, called my sister in law, whose sister just retired from nursing, and she said, just put ice on it 20 minutes, heat on it 20 minutes, and it helped more than all the opioids and all the, you know, high powered 
painkillers they were throwing at him and which were having side effects. And so he's off all his meds except the antibiotic he had his finished taking. Um, he has a next surgery Tuesday and we're hoping for a much quicker recovery. Um, but in the meantime, today we found out for an older medical bill from two years ago that there, it had been sent to a collection agency and now we're being sued. So oh. for like, for like $5,000 or so. And, and we have no idea what we're looking at for bills for this other thing. So we're hoping that somehow we won't have to go to a court date, but I think we have a case number already. And, and I didn't even know we were being sued. <laughs> and all of a sudden we have a case number. So if it's not one thing, it's another. But we'll get through it. We had a, an unexpected, uh, some financial help from our church, which they don't have any money. I hated that, you know, they felt like they needed to help us. But uh, because my husband, had, we had just mentioned that he'd uh, run out of days off and was not going to be paid for those, you know, for three or four days or whatever the total will wind up being. And uh, they sent us money without even us asking. So. We've been blessed through it all. It's still very stressful, but we'll get through it. Yeah. Well, financial needs and, and health problems. Uh, I, I think financial needs, a lot of times are, people can uh, get that straightened out. Um, it's That's usually not insurmountable. The health problems though, sometimes it is insurmountable. I think I, if, if I had to choose, I'd rather have a financial problem because I, I look at that as a very temporary thing that can be solved. But uh, the health problem, sometimes it's chronic and it's, it, and it's fate. It's got, it always gets worse. It doesn't get better. So uh, unless there's a miracle. Anybody here still believe that there, there's answers to prayers and miraculous healings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> I would hope so. I think uh, I heard uh, Paul, you, you said, uh, I don't know, yesterday or recently, you talked about you're not a cessationist. Um, I'm a cessationist to a certain extent, but I, I, I think that um, God is still uh, working. He's still listening. He's still answering prayers and he's still giving us m miracles and uh, saying yes. But sometimes he says no. And he's sovereign, so he gets to decide if he's going to say yes or no. And sometimes he's just saying, wait, you don't get it right now, but later. Um, but I, I really don't think that we have people designated as a healer today in the church. I, I haven't seen this actually play out. And the people who um, believe they are or... or uh, I'm very skeptical about it. And I, I mean, I'm talking about the real miraculous healings. Uh, like Jesus had someone grow a limb, uh, if I'm understanding that scripture correctly. And uh, I'm not seeing, if, if someone didn't have the power to lay hands on someone and heal them, and now I'm not saying you, you can't lay hands on someone and they get healed sometime. But I'm talking about the person that says, I have the gift of healing and you know, you know, I'll always heal them. Uh, it, you know, and well, why don't they go to the hospital and heal everybody in the hospital, right? Right, you know, one right after another. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm skeptical. I've seen so many frauds, uh, and then usually that, you know, it's, it's not free. They, they want, they want, <laughs> they want to be compensated somehow for it too. Anybody's uh, as skeptical as I am about that? I, I am I'm a, I'm a skeptical I admit that I I um I've been deaf in my left ear my entire life and when I was younger I used to pray every day because uh, I was told by other people that you know God can heal me and um, after a while I got a little bit older and I would just quit I quit praying about it and uh, I had people try to twist that though and say that the reason I wasn't being healed was because I didn't have enough faith my faith wasn't strong enough to get healed. And that's the reason why it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I struggled with that for the longest time. Um, I've never witnessed a healing. I've never seen anyone healed. I've heard stories of, of people being healed. And I've been healed emotionally, financially, and just about every other way you can imagine. 
And the truth is, I don't know if uh, I had something that I was unaware of that God healed and never, uh, never allowed it to come to fruition or touch my body in some way and prevented something from happening. There'd be no way for me to know. Um, but uh, I'm not at the point where I can, uh, by looking at scripture and what's said in scripture, that I can say that, oh yes, there's no miracles happening today. There's none, it doesn't ever happen. Um, I've, I've heard people claim that it happened to them. It just doesn't happen for me specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I did a, 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 I think it was a Friday night program like uh, several months ago, dedicated to uh, sharing the miraculous events that we've experienced personally. And I, I think we had about four or five people join the program sharing miracles in their lives. If you have not seen that, uh, it's go to my channel and find it. Uh, miracles we've all experienced, or I think is the title, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not skeptical about miracles. I'm not skeptical about healing. I'm just skeptical that there's a particular person that God's using. I think God uses can use anybody. It's he's not. Well, it doesn't need to designate one particular person as this is the healer in the church. Well, what do you think about that, Paula? Yeah, I agree. I mean, when it, it comes to miracles, I mean, we all know, you know, I think all of us could say we've seen them happen, but um, whether there's a person with that gift is another question. And then we can note, make note of the fact that when God does something very different in history, that's usually when you see the sign gifts um, or when in very extreme circumstances, um, there are a, a lot of Muslims, for example, that say Jesus appeared to them. But here again, it's not not lack of miracles. It's per persons with a particular sign gift other than for whatever reason, the speaking in tongues, which is supposed to be a sign for unbelievers. Um, yeah, you don't see a lot of the healing gifts for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because we have uh, more access to medicine and doctors, and it's simply not as needed, even though we would all disagree and say, yeah, we would rather have a miracle than go to the doctor. Um, but I, I do think that God picks different situations or different times for different things. Um, and some of the lists of spiritual gifts in the New Testament, I think, are more of a sequence such as God gave to the church um, apostles, evangelists, you know, and then down the list. I, I don't think he's saying this is the pecking order. I think he's saying first we started with these and then we get, then we had these and that this was the sign of an apostle was was being able to do miraculous healings, for example. But we don't have apostles anymore. We have, uh, and, and as far as I can tell, apostles biblically are people who were sent out directly by Jesus, right? One way or another, they were sent directly by Jesus because in, in New Testament times, it wasn't as much the person sent out that was important, it was the one who sent them. And even though we're all indirectly sent by Jesus, you know, through the Holy Spirit or whatever, I think they were special and could write scripture because they were taught directly and that they had more of the uh, healing gifts, the really outstanding gifts and more prophecy and things like that than we do today. But I wouldn't call myself a cessationist just because God can make exceptions if he wants. And I don't want to close that door, you know. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I, I don't think I've ever heard you talk about this subject. Okay, let me see if I don't lose this echo. <laughs> um, I've seen miracles. I can't say that I've seen them on the level that we see here in the Bible. Save for if I caught a video of, I, I'm aware of some great miracles that have happened in Africa. Um, there are many claims of people who have come back from Africa and said they witnessed at certain get togethers, even in just small churches, um, people actually having been raised from the dead. So I, I can't say that it's not true. I've not seen that level of miracle. 
uh, but I have no reason to disbelieve them because the testimony isn't weird and it's not strange. Uh, they even had in one case where the man was raised from the dead, the doctor who had pronounced him dead was at the church service. And when the man was raised, he ran away in fear. So I, I don't know on that. I, I believe that it was true. I don't have any reason to disbelieve those people. But uh, that being said, I have witnessed miracles of healing in people's life, even in my own life, not to the level of anything like growing a limb or anything like that. But, you know, I do believe that miracles can and still do happen today. Maybe once we get some of this division that's out in the body, out of the body, through some or most of these false doctrines that have infiltrated the body, we'll begin to see these greater works again. I mean, as long as we have people divided by denominations, divided by false doctrine, um, Gnostic heresies, the denial of the deity of Christ in the so-called true church, mm. and people are pur purveying this and millions are running out buying their books and all this stuff so i think yeah. until um these things are, are are quashed by the truth we we won't see those things but i do have the expectation that we will because it says what's going to happen in the la latter times and uh there is the expectation that these signs and wonders will happen again as a testimony to the world of the difference between fake churches and the real church. Amen. That's a subject right there for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I've also heard about great uh, miraculous uh, events in, in Africa. Um, um, really, really dramatic things uh, that are really like uh, the miracles that we are reading about in the Bible. I mean, uh, miracles to that extent and on that level. I hear a lot of reports about it. I mean, I'm, I, of course, I, it's all hearsay to me. I hope it's true. But if it is true, I'm just curious. Why would it be happening in Africa and not in America? And uh, as, as I don't see it as a common occurrence, I don't really see it. And all I see in America is, is fraud, you know, and uh, um, also the other thing I'd like to ask about this is uh, the, the miracles that Jesus did and the apostles and even in the Old Testament, uh, I, I think that they were, had a dual purpose. One is that God loves us and wants to come to our need. But uh, also, uh, these are called signs and wonders. And a sign is to something to, to uh, give you some kind of proof. Uh, okay, that's what they demanded of Jesus. Okay, give me a sign. I was asking for demanding signs. And Jesus did a lot of miracles to him, not, not just because he loved the people and wanted to heal them. I'm not even sure if we had to divide it and say, well, 50-50, because he loved them and also it served as a sign to prove his claims of uh, deity. Uh, or is it more 90% because he wanted to, needed to prove his claims uh, in 10%? Oh, I, I, I love them too. I don't know if we could discern that, but um, so I, I don't know. I, I gave you a lot of things to think, to, to respond to, but do you think these things in Africa that we're hearing about are are real? And and if so, why why Africa, not other places? That I'm not. I don't. Maybe China. I've also heard of some great things happening in China. Uh, well, I know in Africa they deal with a lot. Well, we deal with it here, but it's more undercover witchcraft over there. You know, they have voodoo doctors and people just practicing this stuff, 
you know, right out in the open is very commonplace. And so I think one of the reasons there are signs and wonders there is because of the level of witchcraft that is there. So the church that's over there that is dealing with spiritual warfare, I mean, they have had test. I've seen testimonies where a pastor said he saw with his own eyes. There's no reason to disbelieve the man. It wasn't any money associated with it. He was over there in a church in Africa and a witch doctor came in and wanted to curse the pastor pastor and the pastor said i don't pray for witches except that they die so if you come in here and challenge me i'm gonna pray that you die and the voodoo doctor turned around and walked out of the church so i don't i don't know maybe that's the reason why they have such a high level because of the level of spiritual darkness that's coming against them yeah, it's almost like they have to rise to the occasion. Uh, we don't have that here in America, so we're sleepy, sleepy Christians. Here. Well, I want to tell y'all something. Y'all probably going to think I'm crazy, but... <laughs> I already do. Uh, I already do, Brother Dave. <laughs> I know, but this is, you know, um, a couple weeks back, I went to a uh, pastor's conference in, in upstate New York, and as I was uh, loading the bus in Atlantic City to go to New York, um, I was standing out on the side of the uh, bus terminal, and a lady came around the corner and it was just me and her and she started shaking her hands in the air and she started speaking in quote unquote tongues and she walked right up on me and she gave me this really ugly stare and I just had this really weird feeling in my spirit. So I, I pointed right in her face and I said, not today, Satan, get on your way. And she stopped shaking her hands. She looked away from me and she walked away. Yeah. There is such you, a thing as satanic tongues. So she may have been trying to place a curse on you. I don't know, but I felt like I wanted to throw up and I just knew something was off. And I said, this is the craziest thing. Nobody around, no cars coming down the street, nothing. Just me leaning up against the side of the building. And this lady walks around the corner and she's doing this really weird thing with her hands in the air. And she's speaking in what, what you would think is tongues and she walks right up on me, gets literally like an inch from my face, and she gives me this stare that if looks could kill, I should have been dead. And I just felt this enormous, nasty weight come over me, and I just I just told her, in Jesus' name, get out of my face. And she just walked off, and she stopped saying whatever she was saying. She stopped shaking her hands. It was clearly to me, she looked like she was full-on demon-possessed. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. She was coming after you. That, listen... A lot of Christians, that's why I think you do need to be careful what you say here on YouTube because they are actually sitting watching you as a believer and they do like reconnaissance to try to get information. If somebody's too friendly and they want to send you something, you may you want to pray about it because you may not want to receive that gift because a lot of times they will put curses on things and try to get it into your hand to bring it into your home to create problems. Uh, witches are real. They do exist and they do, for the most part, hate Christians. It's because of the demons inside of them and then what they're speaking to and with and operating in that hates the light of Christ. So it's not really even you personally, it's who you know you represent, who you working with. So the spirit the spirits that are in darkness are coming against the light of Christ that is in you. So you need to understand that witches are real. And that means even some of you guys on your job, a lot of times you think it's just somebody with a mean personality. You don't know that person could be a witch. I had a situation where I had walked in to speak to a supervisor at my job. And I noticed that this woman who walked in shortly after I did, we're having a conversation. I'm sitting across from his desk, but the chair where I was seated was against the wall. His desk was further away so she could walk between us. And when she went to walk between us, I gave a nod like, hello. And the look that she gave me was like the brother was just saying, I don't think she was even cognizant of the look. I think it was the devil that was in her because that look was like she wanted to kill me. 
And I instantly recognized it because he happened to me before when I was a child. Uh, same situation. I was in a, a supermarket and my mother was with me and this lady gave me a look like she wanted to kill me. And my mother was just so matter of fact with it. I was, I was a little scared. I was a child. And I said, Mama, that woman looking at me she's like she want to kill me. She said, baby, that's not her. That's that spirit inside of her rebuking the name of Jesus. Keep going. So after that, I already know what it is. I took authority, you know, the spirit. We already have authority. I rebuked it in the name of Jesus and uh, bound it because I said no weapon formed against me is going to prosper because she was sitting in her car when I came out and she was just staring me down again like she wanted to kill me. But I perceived that she was a witch. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, uh, Paula, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think there was a good point in the chat that I saw roll by about the fact that Jesus couldn't do many miracles in his hometown because the people had no faith. And that may be very well what it is typically in the Western world, is people have been conditioned not to have faith. And all the time I hear people say, I don't believe I know. And while that can be true on one level, I think it's also indicating the general mindset, which is that we have to have everything <clears throat> according to nature, everything proved to us with with a scientific proof. And so, you know, people don't, even in the churches, a lot of times it's not as much about faith as it is about um, just being sociable or, um, which, which is fine on itself, but it's not a deep tested faith. And that's, I think what we were describing when you asked about problems earlier is if your faith really has to be tested and it's like, uh, you know, it, there's nothing to brag about if you keep your shoes clean, if you never go outside. And so we can say we have faith until it's tested, until you don't get the answers, you don't get the healings, you don't get, you know, the, the resolution um, and then what do you do with God? What is your reaction when things don't happen or they get worse? Like, this, you know, what timing for to find out you're being sued when you're in the middle of surgeries and things, you know? And this this is deliberate and it, it just goes with the territory. But I think, you know, the times that we think why, you know, this is the worst possible time is the whole point of it is to test your faith. And Hebrews 11 it's kind of divided in half. We have the first half, people who got miraculous delivery, they had people raised from the dead, they were healed, and then it stops for a little bit, and then it says, but look at these people, they were hounded, they lived in caves, they were too good for this world. So there's no difference in who has better faith than those who got miracles and those who didn't. And so I think when it comes to that sort of, you know, the sign gifts and all that thing in general, that it depends on a lot of things and it isn't always something we're going to understand. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, what is, wh what do you think the response would be? Uh, anybody who wants to answer this. Uh, I, I heard Lisa talk about how she dealt with the spiritual warfare and um, what is the, what is the protocol? What would you do if you felt you or someone else, you know, was under some spiritual attack, uh, Anyone? What would I do if someone was under spiritual attack? I uh, I would uh, uh, pray with them and pray for them, and um, speak to them about uh, you know their hedge of protection. Whether they uh, kind of dive in a little bit and get more information, try to be informed as possible. I'm not a deliverance person by any stretch of the imagination. I've I've uh, come into contact with people that had very mm -hmm. things going going on with them, and all I've ever been able to do is just just pray. And sometimes just praying with that person in person uh, uh, helps. It helps them. I, I've never prayed for anyone that didn't seem to feel that Holy Spirit working uh, into that situation. So I, I think there's a lot of power to that, and that's all that needs to be done. Um, I've never run into a person that was actively demon possessed i'm sure uh they're they're a lot more um obscure i don't think they want to always be discovered uh so they they don't always uh look like it is on tv with the yeah. person reacting like that uh, i i i'm assuming that we all 
agree that a believer cannot be possessed because we're already possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, there's, Amen. A, there's a sign on the door, occupied. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're sealed. And uh, but uh, we can be not not possessed, but uh, um, what's the word? Um, uh, oppressed. Uh, oppressed. Oppressed. Yeah, we do come under oppression. As a matter of fact, you can you can be pretty confident that if you're actually busy working for Jesus, you're going to come under some kind of spiritual attack or oppression from the from the demon world. Uh, I know I've said this before, but when uh, I remember I preached street preaching for about five years and I would go there about three or four days a week for five years. And it took me more than a year for the, the uh, attacks to stop. And by that, I mean, I was so consumed with fear and anxiety uh, the night before the morning I wake up, as I'm thinking about it all day, as I'm driving over, to, and, just, and until until I spoke, and then it was gone. But as soon as I spoke, started preaching, uh, I, there was no more spiritual. Attack. I did get come come under spiritual attack from people who wanted to were evil people coming against the gospel. But I, what I'm talking about is before I was preaching, it was I believe that the the demon world was was trying to scare me uh, somehow and put, put this fear in me so I wouldn't preach. And one day, out of a thousand times I did I did it, one out of a thousand, they won. And I, as I drove over there, I just made a U-turn and turned and went home. I, I was just too too afraid that day to do it. Uh, but what I routinely did in my battle is that i would just use the scriptures you know the devil Amen. flees from me in the name of jesus i can do all things through christ who strengthens me greater is he who is in me than he is in the world and um i use scripture and it was a, it was a battle i they did but what really got rid of them immediately was preaching the word to the crowd as soon as i started preaching the fear was gone and and i didn't feel any any attack at, after that Praise the Lord, Brother Luke. I'm glad you said that. You reminded me of something. Um, when I was, I was in my room one day and I had went to sleep. And it was a dream. I was cognizant it was a dream. It wasn't an actual spiritual attack. And in the dream, this fierce looking being was coming at me. And he had claws and he had fangs and he was trying to get at me. And I stood up in the middle of my bed and I started throwing all kind of stuff at him in the room. Just anything, a lamp, you know, a chair, just anything I could grab to throw at him. And he's just swatting it away like it's nothing. And I woke up staunch from the dream. And I sat up straight in my bed and I'm like, Lord, what was that about? And the Holy Spirit said, when the devil comes to you, speak the word. So that's amazing that, you know, you reached, you realized that you need to speak what the Bible has promised you. These are these are his true and precious promises, the word that is here and what he has declared about you. So when the enemy comes to you, that's why you need to get in here and study so that the Holy Spirit can recall that and bring it back to your remembrance for you to attack the devil with the word. If you remember when Jesus dealt with the devil, he kept saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. So yeah, that's, that's what we spirit. need to do. Yeah. Amen, brother. Go ahead. No, amen. I was just in agreement with you. That's, you know, we got to get that word uh, in our heart because that's our, uh, you know, when the Bible talks about the armor of God, uh, every piece of armor is a um, defensive uh, uh, thing and our the only offensive weapon that we have is our sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And um, you know, we have to wield it against the enemy. And, you know, if you're feeling fearful or you're feeling, um, you know, uh, full of doubt or, or fear or confusion or anything like that, or any pressure, any type of attack that may come from uh, the enemy, you know, Psalms 91 is, is like my go-to. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah, heard you say Psalms 31 many times. I need, need to go back and reread that. You keep on bringing it up. 91. Psalms 91. Yep. Oh, 91. Let me write that down. I committed that to memory. But yes, also, um, not just the sword. If you go and you read Ephesians where he lists all of the uh, the armor and everything that we've been given, there's one last thing that he says. And that's praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So when we pray, that is another offensive weapon against the enemy. And, you know, the Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. Now, most people that I've heard interpret that scripture say that that is our heavenly angels that we're able to dispatch. And Jesus said where two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. So I would say if somebody, if you're really feeling spiritually oppressed and attacked by the devil, if it's get on the phone or get somebody else that's in your home that's a believer and grab hands and pray, because already now you have brought Jesus into the midst. And then you can pray and dispatch your angels. I've done it a number of times where I'll pray that my home is watched, protected, uh, that that uh, no evil, hurt, harm, or danger will come to my home. I remember one time, and I, I can't prove it, but I just believe that this is probably the case because it was it was a cool time of year. It wasn't extremely hot. And I prayed and bound the devil, pled the blood of Jesus over my property, rebuked any foul, wicked spirits, and I left. And I was gone for a couple of days. And when I came back, there was a package that somebody had, I guess they attempted to deliver it, but they didn't bring it up to the door. They left it out at the outer fence. And so uh, a friend of mine was with me and she said, well, that's kind of strange. They were kind of lazy not to bring it up. And I don't, I don't know, I just felt an Im impressed that that person was either possessed or oppressed and could not approach any further and had to drop the package where they left it because it was so unusual. It had never happened before in the many, many years that I had been there. And this was the first time that they left it way out on the outer edge of the property and didn't bring it up to the door. I thought it was quite peculiar and I don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are no coincidences. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I, everybody's probably familiar with C.S. Lewis. Uh, you know, he, he produced so much great uh, writing, and uh, he's greatly respected. I, I'm not really so sure that he got his his, uh, his gospel understanding right, but but some of the things he wrote are very can be very helpful but he, he wrote a book about spiritual warfare called um um what is it uh, i've got it behind me what is it uh, i'll think of it in a minute but the premise of the book was that every person has a uh, a demon assigned to them and throughout your life, that demon's first priority is to try to prevent you from ever learning and believing the truth and getting saved. Uh, if they fail in that and you get saved, then their their job changes to um, trying to prevent you from growing and producing and, and, and serving. Uh, so they're, then they're, they're trying to oppress you and... Um, screw tape? Yeah, screw tape, yeah, screw tape letters. Thank you is the name of it. Uh, so it's a it's an interesting book. Uh, I think the premise. I'm not sure if we can. You know, I don't see in the Bible that we were assigned a demon like that. Um, he, I think he's speculating. Maybe he got it from some extra biblical things that are not in the canon. That he. Uh, I don't know how he came up with it, but it, it's novel, so it's interesting. Uh, but I do think the basic idea that we uh, that they don't want us to get saved. Failing in that. They don't want you to ever grow and mature and be a productive Christian. Absolutely, because uh, brother Luke, they know that once we become children of God, uh, you know they can't. Satan can't have our soul, but he can definitely wreak havoc on our growth, on our testimony, um, you know, just on our minds, and and, and you know, setting snares and and temptations and influences. 
Um, but since they can't have our soul, you know, they, they seek to try to definitely uh, make us ineffective and, and destroy our witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we should wind it down over the next 10 minutes because uh, I, f I have to consider the East Coast uh, people being up at it's, it's uh, 11 p.m. in the East. Uh, so uh, let's start to uh, see if there's anything in the chat room that... Any, any question or something that we can respond to before we finish? I don't, I'm not seeing. If you have a, a question or something you want us to address, put it in all caps right now. And, uh, oh, here's one. Code Man says, was Billy Graham saved? Because some people say no. Uh, well, it depends. If Matthias is right, then then uh, uh, he definitely was not saved. Because I'm, my belief is that a person can get saved and then later fall into apostasy uh, because I know that when I saw Billy Graham about 1972 I went to a Billy Graham crusade uh, and I went forward but I know I didn't get saved because I didn't even hear the real gospel I heard a, a, a workspace repent of your sins uh, uh, to get out of hell uh, message so he didn't have the right message then and I know that he didn't have it when he got old because it changed from one extreme to the other. One hand, he's, in the beginning, he's teaching the, the lordship heresy. And in the end, he's, he's teaching universalism, that everybody's going to go to heaven anyway. Even if you're a Muslim or an atheist, you're still going to go to heaven. God doesn't, that there's not one way, all ways, all, all, many different ways to heaven. Uh, so, but... Uh, could he have been saved at some point when he was younger and, and, and through the, the simple gospel, but God it became apostate and, and, and went into all these errors? Uh, it, I think it's possible, but I, I, I'm inclined to think he didn't get saved. Uh, what, does anybody else have any thoughts on uh, the uh, Billy Graham? All I know is that uh, toward the end, he was saying some things that didn't match up with what he used to say. And um, what he what he used to say, he did, I have heard sermons from him where he's preaching the correct gospel. But then, you know, there'd be some decisionism in there and, and people uh, going up on mass, uh, answering the altar call, and were they really saved or not? I mean, that's between them and God, but I'm sure Matthias would, would say no that a lot of them weren't um but to me i can't tell each individual situations between him and god but i would agree that just walking down an aisle you hear billy graham is very powerful walking down an aisle if the person really believes it then walking down an aisle works uh but uh we, we can't determine whether they really believed it or not so that's where the slippery slope seems to be but he yeah. said some messed up things toward the end and it's hard to determine whether that was his handlers because he was getting older and, and who knows what kind of uh, issues he was having with his memory and brain. But he said some things toward the end. The, the last video that they put out, he, he said some concerning things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, liberally conservative says, I believe in once saved, always saved. Uh, yeah, we all do. Uh, that's not the issue with Billy Graham here. That we, the, we, If he got saved, then he remained saved. But the question is, was he a false convert? Uh, uh, you know, some of us say that you can get saved and then become apostate. And uh, some of us say, if you become apostate, it, it proves that you're, you never really understood and believed correctly. Uh, so you didn't lose your salvation, it's just that you didn't really get it. And that's an acceptable position uh, too. But uh, in Billy Graham's case, yeah, we're not saying that, uh, don't, don't misconstrue it, we're not saying that he lost his salvation. And uh, Can you read my comments at the beginning of the show? In Billy Graham's situation, if, you, if we go by the verse that says you'll know them by their fruit and look at Franklin Graham, um, there'd be some questionable uh, fruit there, in my opinion. Well, just I'm curious, what have you heard Franklin Graham say that you found questionable. I don't follow any of them, so I, I don't know. Well, I don't follow him either. It's just, it, it, it's, uh, he's, he's really popular. I'm not as popular as his father. 
and it, it, it's not necessarily one single comment. He does a lot of things, he does a lot of works, uh, you know, Samaritan's person and all this, but um, uh, it's rather a long story, but I, I applied for uh, uh, a job with Samaritan's Purse and um, I was not accepted because I had poor credit. That's that's what the uh, they wanted you to have good credit. And I, I remember just being so upset about that because I wanted to be part of the uh, uh, evangel uh, evang I can't think of the word uh, evangelical. That's the word I was looking for uh, association and help out with Samaritan's Purse. And I was upset uh at the time that i wasn't allowed to do so because their their parameters that they were putting were so stringent that they looked at your credit in order to apply so wow huh. yeah i think that would have upset me too yeah it left a bad taste in my mouth and franklin graham's the head of that organization um and he he says some things about the lesbian and, and gay community that's a little over the top um, I'm not saying it's not sin, but I, I, I think if you're a person like Franklin Graham that's in the in the spotlight, they, they're, they're, you should just be uh, a little bit more careful. I phrase some of his uh, beliefs. It just seems work work based. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Well, Celine made the point that we're, people are confusing discipleship and salvation. That's the truth. And what I what I what I, uh, I I've heard uh, Paula. I've heard you use the, the term. Um, rightly handling the word of God. Um, of course, a lot of people fly the banner and and uh, exclusively use the, the KJV terminology, uh, rightly divide the word of truth. And uh, they use this word divide to chop it up into pieces for, for uh, dispensationalism. And, uh, but um, and I know you you have a, a version of dispensationalism. <clears throat> I don't object to that. But when you say rightly handling, I think that's really how I would interpret it. In that, in that, uh, rightly understanding it, knowing that yes, sometimes sometimes the, the the person is talking about salvation. Sometimes they're talking about discipleship. And and let's not confuse the two. Is it service or is it salvation? And uh, that the people were taking these verses that telling us how to serve and, and and saying that's how you get saved and they don't get it so that that's to me rightly handling it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, dispensationalism shouldn't lean on that verse anyway. I I it cringe when people use that one as a proof text because it really is out of context when they do that, and it is. It's about handling. It's about carefully explaining understanding explaining the text and applying it that's that's what i think handling encompasses that meaning um but as for her question um or just observation i'm not sure but it's true that a lot of people don't know where one begins and the other leads off because salvation is a gift it can't be anything but a gift and yet if you you know, we have instructions on people needing to be discipled. They're all over the New Testament. Then we should be doing that. And the reason is people are supposed to grow spiritually. Yeah. That doesn't mean they weren't born, though. And that's where the confusion is, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, some people are saved, but not disciples. Other people are disciples, but not saved. Disciple is someone that's... Uh, either working for or studying under uh, someone. And so a person can be thinking, I'm, I'm working for Jesus, I'm working for Christianity, and I'm studying and all these things uh, as a disciple would do to learn and serve. Uh, and yet they, they never believed and got saved. And, and then other people, they believe and get saved. And and then they, they resist the Holy Spirit their whole life and, and never... Uh, uh, grow and mature and become productive completely well, agree it, it's certainly a paradox and mm -hmm. i know I, i've thought about this often how we can be walking glaring contradictions yeah 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 be, being a christian certainly doesn't guarantee you're gonna become a, a, a really good person necessarily unfortunately <laughs> uh all right, let's take uh, each of us a little time now to kind of uh, close up and 
give our, our thoughts on the discussion and, and the time together tonight. And, and uh, some of you in the, have, have asked in the chat room throughout, uh, uh, is it an open panel and you know, it's, uh, how is it being done now? And uh, this, this last week, uh, I have uh, tried to give a lot of thought and prayer and I asked for a lot of advice from the, the congregation and, and the elders uh, on uh, how to proceed. And what you're seeing tonight is, is the result of that. I, I, I was basically ready to throw in the towel and say, I, I don't want to deal with it because I, I don't want the stress of, of being, uh, 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 having uh, any, any conflicts to deal with. So, uh, but there was such a, an appeal to wait. The Fr Fellowship Friday is, is um, really appreciated by a lot of people. And isn't there some way you can continue doing this? So we, we figured out that this is, this is what we're doing as a solution. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be inviting uh, uh, Renee, uh, uh, Lisa, and Paula, and, and uh, Daniel, uh, Cripps, and Dave um, each Friday. Now, they're not obligated to be here every Friday, but out of the six of them, maybe we'll have one or two or three of them or all of them sometimes. And that will be what the, the panel consists of. And um, and we'll try to interact with the with the chat room as much as possible, to, so that we're all having fellowship. But the, the panel is limited to this group that's selected here. <clears throat> and uh, I, I had a good time tonight, uh, and I'm, I I enjoyed the conversation and the time and the, the fellowship very much. And as I, I was hoping that we could, as I said, let's uh, let's talk about share our thoughts, what's on our mind. Let's let's share what our our, our needs are, our, our problems, and uh, and then let's also don't forget to share our, our blessings and praise praise reports. We didn't get into a lot of praise reports tonight. Maybe that's a good way to end. To uh, I'm just very very thankful. I'm just thankful. I mean, on one hand, I complain that you know my wife's going to be gone for a month and how lonely I'm going to be. But on the other hand, I'm thankful. Look, at least we're we're blessed enough that I can pay the bills and still afford for my wife to leave for a month and, and, and go back to her 50 year high school reunion and see her lifelong friends and family for a month and that we can afford to do that. So I'm just, I'm thankful that, that God is providing all my needs. Uh, let's, go with, uh, let's go with sis, sister Paula next, uh, your, your summary thoughts. Um, I don't know. I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, it can happen with it. It does matter if you have a limited panel. I think uh, when there's a rapport that can happen with people that I think is more productive than having everybody on. It's not that we're trying to be elitist or anything. It's just that when uh, one thing I've noticed about Hangouts, Google Hangouts or YouTube, is that people like live streams. They like to be in the chat, but what they like to come and listen to is a group of people talking. And because, you know, we can do lectures on our own channels by ourselves. But I think a group that communicates well and is on the same page on all the important things and um, can do the give and take back and forth without stepping on each other and fighting, I think that's really a, a good thing to keep going. All right. I'm glad you could join us tonight, Paula. And uh, Brother Dave? Yes, sir. Give us a little summary of what you think of our the time we spent Just, tonight. You know, the fellowship is always good. It's, it, it's always encouraging. And, you know, to see uh, people showing up in the chat and, and, and fellowshipping amongst each other as well as following along with what we're talking about and just hearing from the people on the panel and, you know, what they're going through and, and how they think about things. It's so uplifting and it's encouraging. And I'm just, uh, I'm just blessed, you know, like to be a part of it and, and to hear everybody and, and what they think and what they say. And, you know, I, th I think uh, we learn a lot from each other and, and, you know, it's uplifting and, and it's just overall just a positive thing. And, and, you know, you never know what we're going to talk about on Friday. So um, it was kind of interesting where it went tonight and uh, it was, it was really edifying. And so I just want to, 
thank everybody on the panel tonight. Love all you guys and uh, just keep your heads up and, and keep faithful. Love you too, Brother Dave. Uh, awesome. Um, okay, Brother brother Cripps, you give us yeah. your summary, summary, please. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed it. And uh, there certainly wasn't any division or dissension. And I agree with what Paul said. I mean, you have a few people, uh, like we talked about off air on Wednesday, you have a few people that you can you can trust and um, certainly not excluding anyone. I thought uh, Paul put that out there pretty good. We're not excluding anyone. Um, and uh, what you didn't say, Brother Luke, and I think that you mean that me, mean to say this, which is if people have an interest in being on the panel, of course, they can uh, email you and have a conversation with you and, and uh, certainly make decisions to bring people on. But um, as far as tonight's uh, discussion went, it went well, and we didn't know exactly where it was going to go, but we hit on some uh, important things and some, some topics that we could uh, make broader in the future. Um, and I enjoyed it. I uh, 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 appreciate Paula, as I said at the beginning, and uh, also uh, Dave and uh, Lisa. It was a pleasure to talk to you. I've heard you on a couple shows, um, but that was it was very good. And of course, I know Brother Luke uh, a little bit better than most probably uh, uh, on the panel, uh, at least. But um, I'd like like to get to know each of you better, and I, I can't promise to be here every Friday, but I, as much as I can, I'd like to to be a part of it and have more discussions. Um, and as, as far as a praise report, I I'd just like to say a prayer, praise report about um, just every day that I walk this path with God. It just seems like no matter the circumstances, this is what He's teaching me. Um, whatever my circumstances are, I can have uh, uh, Christ's joy. The joy uh, in in John, John says that the the joy we have in Christ, uh, meaning the joy comes from Him. It's not our joy. I'm not surviving uh, or thriving or living on my own joy because that fails. But the joy I get through a life in Christ that never fails. He never fails. Um, so things change every day. I'm growing and changing. Uh, doesn't mean my circumstances are always good. You know, you guys mentioned. Uh, financial troubles and health problems. And I don't have too many health problems, but um, I'm getting older. So I imagine that I, I'll, I'll face that at some point, but certainly financial problems, um, you know, struggle through those. Those are circumstances. Uh, but I, I, I delight in him and uh, I have uh, friends and, and, and people around me and uh, it's just been a wonderful thing. So I celebrate every day. I wake up every day wondering what new thing God's going to show me or what new, uh, uh, friend I'm going to make or what new uplifting thing how can I my question to myself is how can I be more uplifting and edifying uh, and give God the glory to reach out to other people in the body and uh, striving for that one mind uh, I, I agree with what was said earlier if we were all in one mind then uh, this would be a different world that we lived in if there wasn't so much division I think it was Paula uh, if there wasn't so much division uh that this would be a different place. Maybe it wasn't Paul, maybe it was Lisa. I apologize if I attributed the comment to the wrong person. But um, yeah, that's it. I went a little bit long, but uh, thank you guys for letting me be a part of it. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, brother. And Sister Lisa. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, yeah, this was a great discussion tonight. Um, I enjoyed talking. I was actually going to yield all my time to Dave, but and I don't want to. I don't want to overtax him. <laughs> just gonna let him have all the time. I'm just. I'm just. Playing. He was rather subdued tonight compared to. Other <laughs> yeah, it was a little weird. He was kind of quiet. I was gonna give him the the extra time. But um, yeah, this has been a great discussion. I've really enjoyed uh, speaking with all of you and hearing your thoughts on things, and uh, even reading the comments in the chat section. Um, you know, brothers and sisters, just fellowshipping talking about things that may be of interest we don't have to fight uh if you know if we disagree on something i think everybody here will be civil to simply uh, agree to disagree which is you know what's called for and uh and i appreciate it i would never have gotten involved with the panel if i even had uh, the slightest inkling and I know brother Luke like you said for years I've known you for years now I've watched you remain consistent throughout the years in your tone and in your manner and you know like I say you always earnestly contend for the faith as do I believe everyone else here on the panel and it's just been a joy and a blessing to sit in fellowship with you guys and just talk about things that may be of concern 
each evening with the group of the body of Christ that appear in the chats and or if there's some pressing topic that uh, anyone on the panel feels led to talk about. So I want to thank you again, Brother Luke, for having me. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with, with all of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, we, of course, we were missing someone tonight, uh, Sister Renee. Uh, I know she would have been with us tonight if she felt well enough, but she's apparently under the weather. So everybody pray for Renee for her health. And Matthias, he's been hiding behind the curtain like the Wizard of Oz, but he's the one that's producing the program and makes it happen. So Matthias, uh, if, if you're listening now, would you like to take a minute to give us a little summary of your thoughts? But yeah, it's it was good listening in, um, being kind of uh, a third party looking in. It was very interesting, and I enjoyed being a part of it. So it was kind of like being in the chat room, but uh, up here listening, and um, it was great. I look forward to the next one. I thought it was uh, uh, very edifying, and the topics just you know who knows where they're gonna go. So it's great. It was great. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Who knows where it's going to go? Yeah, definitely. Normally, uh, when I do anything, whether I'm just producing a video by myself or, or doing some kind of a Bible study with others, uh, I have at least an outline. You know, I, I know where I'm going to go, but <laughs> tonight we didn't know. And that's, I guess that's the way we'll do it on Fridays. Uh, <clears throat> so anybody's free to just bring any thoughts needs and praise reports and well that's where we'll go um i'm i'm also very excited uh to to see what uh, uh lisa paula and renee are going to be doing together they've agreed to collaborate and do some kind of programs together so everybody keep your eye out for that all right okay uh i guess that's it for tonight don't forget to join us on uh sunday 5 p.m eastern for the Church of the Eternally Secure, now known as CES, uh, uh, for our church program, uh, and also the CES uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, that's 9.30 Eastern time on Wednesdays. And hope you'll join us for all of these programs. Thank you all for participating. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. <laughs>